you're all here for careers in the social sciences, correct? And you're all grad students? OK, great. So uh, let me just introduce myself very quickly. I'm not going to give you a long bio, although you know, little tidbits about my bio will probably come out as I talk uh, here, because this is a rather personal um, presentation, I have to say. I'm mostly drawing on things that I've learned along the way on my journey uh, to share with you. I'm an assistant professor in sociology here at UBC. I'm in my third year. And uh, this is my dream job. <laughs> so in one respect, I'm a great person to give this talk because I landed my absolute first choice anywhere in the world job. I'm ex over the moon to be here at UBC. And three years in, I'm, I'm still very happy to be here. Um, now that said, this doesn't mean that I've made perfect choices <laughs> everywhere along the way and done everything absolutely right and perfectly strategically in order to get here. Um, in fact, I had a bit of a meandering path, a uh, path that involved a uh, postdoc and involved a couple of years working at a policy job while I was trying to finish up my dissertation. Uh, so I wasn't sort of straight for, you know, a year in between my master's and my PhD, which I kind of call my last year. I'm not really sure what I did that year, to be honest. Um, so it wasn't a straight from A to B kind of trajectory. And when I reflect back on where I was at various points in my journey, one of the themes for me is that I often didn't know what the heck I was doing. I didn't know what the lay of the land was. And I found that I think that it's very easy once you're a professor to sort of assume that your students know more about how academic careers work than they actually do. <laughs> and there were definitely points along the path where I could have really benefited from some advice. And uh, I, did, I wasn't proactive in going out and getting it. My professors weren't proactive in imparting it to me because they probably assumed that I knew more than I did. So if I say some things today that are obvious, <laughs> bear with me. But I, I think it tends, to, um, it tends to be worth sometimes belaboring the obvious because I don't want to assume that folks uh, you know, have all this hidden knowledge about how the academic system works. It may not, in fact, be the case. So as I said, you know, I've learned some things along the way. I've tried to figure out what the lay of the land was and how, how one should um, go through the process as efficiently as possible. Not to say that I didn't make mistakes along the way and make choices that were not the best. And so what I'm going to share with you today is, is pretty personal. It's the kind of things that I've learned along the way. And so I want to have that caveat out there <laughs> from the start, that this is my perspective. Um, of course, it's a perspective that's informed not just by my own experience, but with talking with many friends and colleagues who are also in academe at various stages and the things that they've learned and that they've done right and that they've done wrong with more um, professors more advanced in their careers, and also with you know, reading various things like the Ms. Mentor advice column at the Chronicle of Higher Education, which I really recommend. Not only is it kind of a fun read, but um, it's often very good advice. And I'd have to say that uh, don't just read the advice about grad students. Read the questions from the full tenured professors, because it gives you a little bit of insight sometimes in what people's assumptions are and how they think. So there are, in fact, good resources out there that go beyond this talk that can help you understand the lay of the land. So the website of the Chronicle of Higher Education, very useful to visit it, to read Ms. Mentor, to read the, the columns that are in their career corner, um, to read the letters that people write, how people respond to the advice. This is all really good things to do. There's um, some good books out there. The Academic Job Search Handbook, when you're ready to go on the market, is very helpful to look at. Uh, so what are you going to do with that? Finding careers outside of academe. <laughs> it's always good to have a plan B if things don't work out. Um, and then there's, of course, the subgenre of academic novels, which are you know, often quite interesting to read. Now, one caveat, they're usually written by people who are in English departments, because these are the people who end up being novelists. So for the social sciences, you know, it's not exactly, uh, and it's usually, these are comic, um, you know, a perfect representation of how academe works. But they're a lot of fun, and sometimes you can learn interesting things from them as well. So as we go through here, we have time. We have a lot of time for questions at the end. But obviously, it's a very small group. And this is an informal talk. I didn't make any PowerPoints. I do have notes. But um, you know, I'm not super wedded to exactly following through them, uh, depending on what your interests are and where you're at. So feel free to interrupt. OK, feel free to raise your hands if you have questions, if you want me to say more about something, if you want to challenge something I say because it sounds crazy. Uh, that's good. We can, we can do that. We don't have to do this as a sort of really formalized talk. And I think we'll learn more and have a better time if we don't, probably. 